Experiment time. Today I'm going to make three brats with ludicrously high hydration. Join the fun. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. A while back, I made an experiment where I made bread with hydration of 90%, 95%, and 100%. That experiment is linked in the card above. Somebody suggested, jokingly, I think, that I should try and make 120% hydration bread. So today, I'm going to make three breads, one with 100% hydration, one with 110% hydration, and one with 120% hydration. This is bound to fail miserably. <laughs> if you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. I'll be making all the breads using a 50% Tang Zong, which in itself is pretty ludicrous, but to have any chance of the breads staying together, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Flour-wise, I'm testing out some flours from a Danish mill called Kornby Mølle. I'll be using 80% of their number one wheat flour, which is a finely milled bread flour or strong flour. The remaining 20% is their number three rye flour, which is a very coarse rye flour. I'll be milling that on my mock mill at the zero setting, so to make it pretty fine. All the formulas are linked in the description. These are the words, this is the experiment. First I built the Levan for use in all three breads. <laughs> and then I realized that I needed a bigger glass for it to triple, so I switched the container. Then I made enough Tang Zong for all three breads. If you want to see the specifics of making a Tang Zong sourdough bread, I'm linking my video for that in the card above. Then it was time to auto-lease the flour for all three breads. I included the salt in the auto-lease because the hydration is so high. I will also have a video coming out soon where I test the difference between salt during auto-lease and salt added after the starter. So look out for that. After the Levan had grown to its peak, it was time to mix the dough. I mixed the same amount of Levan into each dough so that I could expect approximately the same bulk fermentation time. After I had mixed the doughs, uh, they rested to relax the gluten. Then the bulk was going and I started folding the doughs. The first coil fold. This was the 100% hydration dough. Looked a bit shaggy at first. This one looked a lot nicer, more cohesive. And this one was wet like a duck in a pond. Nice gluten development though. The second coil fold is looking a lot better than the first fold though. This one was a bit more stretchy and wet the second time around, 
Very extensible though. This one was still very wet, but much better than the first time too. And the third coil fold, This one was now looking super nice. This one was very stretchy but very cohesive. This one was coming together as well. Then it was time for the quiet part of the bulk. Each dough was moved to a bulking container and left to grow with about 25%. Once they've grown, it was time to pre-shape the different doughs. First, 100% hydration dough. This was a really nice dough to work with. Look at how it comes together as a ball almost right away. Then the 110% hydration dough. This one was very sticky. It even stuck to my non-stick bench scraper. And I even had to wash the scraper off mid-sheet. There we go, much better. Then the last one. I'm trying to be more careful this time around. It was still super wet though. A bit of a wash again and it was fine. There we go. And after a little rest on the counter, it was time to final shape these doughs. First, the 100% hydration dough. First, a bit of stretching.
still a nice dough. This will be a great pool. Whoops. Sometimes I'm amazed I get out of bed without hurting myself. Then the 110% hydration dough. This one actually looks much more cohesive than the 100%. Interesting. Look at how nicely it came together. Then the 120% hydration dough. Very wet, but great gluten development and elasticity. It also came together nicely. Note to self, put more rice flour on the edge of the banneton. Then I put them in the fridge for an overnight retard. Then the next day, it was time to bake. First the 100% hydration. Looks really nice, except for that stuff that stuck to the banneton. It was fixable though. It wasn't so easy to score though. And this is how it looked out of the oven. Nice oven spring. Then the 110% hydration dough. Eh, <laughs> more sticking. Easier to score than the first one though. And that's how it looked. A great and wonderful smell. Then the 120% hydration dough. <laughs> this seemed to be a common theme. Scoring was fine. And here it comes out of the oven. Well, that certainly doesn't look too shabby either. All right, after the bread cooled, it was time to cut them. That's a really nice crumb in the 100% hydration. Nice height and oven spring too. This is the 110% hydration. While it's not standing as proud, it's still a really nice looking crumb. Then the 120% hydration. Pretty flat to be sure, but a nice looking crumb too though. After I cut the bread, I wanted to make a taste test. Mmm, delicious. There's really no discernible difference in taste. They're all wonderful bread that I'd eat at any time. All right, so that 100% hydration bread looked pretty fine. 
I have to say that all the bread should have probably been baked a bit longer, judging from the crumb. Not inedible in any way, but a bit on the moist side. The other two collapsed more as the hydration grew. It looks like 100% is probably close to the edge of what's possible for a freestanding loaf. No doubt the other two could have made fine bread in a pan. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Oh.